Well, you talk about a pedigree that you kind <laughs> of get passed to you from a young age. Casey Clemens has been around big league atmospheres growing up in Texas as the son of the Rocket Roger Clemens. We saw some big pop in the bottom of the first. But that wall ball triple from Casey Clemens. It's been quite a ride as we are joined by seven-time Sun Award winner Roger Clemens. Welcome to Staten Island. Thanks, guys. I'm glad y'all are here. I got one of my old battery mates sitting right here. Look at this. I just gave you a hard time. A little warning track power there. Man, Come on. we need to play at noon. That ball <laughs> might have been on the batter's side. I like this ballpark being big. First pitch by Julio Terran to former Red Sox catcher. Blake Swihart looks beautiful they the turf I mean they just got this done they did a great job on this field what has it been like three years since they've had a team come through here so this is this is exciting for Staten Island rocket I was talking about the the skyline of Manhattan Unbelievable. Got this big ship going in center field I mean it's just an amazing <laughs> how, place how does that float there's all of our <laughs> doors and windows they finally made it <laughs> they, they finally made it here just in case the batter's eye wasn't tall enough right that's awesome. Great, unbelievable view from up here. Now tell us about Casey as a player. Yeah, Case, uh, you know, a few years back, I caught up in the COVID stuff. He was with the Blue Jays uh, doing his thing, and, um, you know, he loves it. I said, if you still got a fire in your belly, let's go, uh, you know, get out here, get, you know, get yourself going and be seen, and uh, hopefully somebody grab him. And, you know, if not, I mean, uh, his gloves, big league ready. I think, um, you know, he's... You know, his IQ, his baseball IQ is off the chart, obviously, of hanging course. around all yeah. of us when yeah. we were doing our thing. And um, so he loves it. He's got he's got a good bat left-handed. He's pretty methodical. I think that's why he shoots 70 when he plays golf. <laughs> and uh, he gets back to, uh, you know, uh, affiliated ball. They, they're running that clock, so he's going to have to speed up a little bit. He's he, He'll think through what a guy's trying to do to him. He's like my youngest son. My youngest son will hunt pitches. Cody's with the Tigers, and he'll hunt pitches. And, um, you know, again, I just told him, like you said, most guys are going to give you one good pitch, maybe two. Don't miss it. They're going to make a mistake. And uh, that's why I encourage even guys at this level to be power pitchers, not power throwers. What was your reaction when he told you that he was going to be going to play in New York this season yeah I mean there's a there was four or five teams talking to him I said you know you get after it. this is your deal and uh, just keep me posted where you're going to be but once I knew he's going to be up here in New York and he goes I'm going to wear a 22 and I said <laughs> well let's go let's get all the karma we can and uh, and uh, you know get you up here and get going now you've been a part of some independent baseball right you like this whole this whole I did, gig. I, I did baby as you know flash we had uh we had uh, uh, three, let's see, we've sold, we sold Corpus Christi. You know, it's kind of a thing for the owners to buy their minor league clubs. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, you know, we, uh, we sold the uh, Corpus Christi team. We still have Round Rock. And, of course, Sugarland sold now to ask the Astros AAA. I think they're the Space Cowboys now. Mm. Great names across minor league baseball. Go on, I'll tell clutch. you what, though, Casey's facing one of your former teams here. For a hot moment in time, you were a Lexington legend. You are correct. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. I, I, I went through uh, Lexington and played with Kobe, my oldest one, and uh, that was a that was a treat. I the Astros had me come out of retirement. <laughs> Anybody retire once, right? So uh, ended up in Lexington. A lot of fun. Kobe was third baseman at the time. What was that like? It, it was it was great. You know, I was trying to get a scouting report from him. I remember the highlight of that. He came over from third base. A guy came up, a left-handed hitter, and I thought he was going to give me a scouting report. And I had already punched out a few guys, a few strikeouts, and he comes in, gets ready. I, I told him to come to the mound so they'd get a pitcher or two of us. And he said, hey, Pops, let me run this by you. And I'm thinking I'm getting their scouting report. He goes, hey, you punch out one more guy. All 9,000 people here today get free windshield wiper fluid. <laughs> <laughs> I said, thanks for the uh, tip. One and two, the counts are Ryan Jackson. The runner leading off at first. All right, speaking of scouting reports, give us a scouting report on catcher John Flaherty. Well, he was quiet which I really loved with all my catchers. He, he had a great uh, target to throw to. And uh, there's a little punch out. Yeah, Ryan Jackson strikes out looking. 
Um, you know what? I, in my and and he knows this because I've talked about it before. I, 24 years. Um, you don't do that by yourself. You do it with great catchers who pay attention to detail. Um, I called some of my game from the mound back then, but there were times where. You know, we would get together on the mound and uh -huh. call maybe two pitches when a guy was on second base. Back then, worrying about guys that were stealing signs, you know. But we practiced perfect. Uh, bullpens were, were, were quality, not quantity, when we needed them. And, again, he knew, this man right here knew when I, what I had and what I didn't have and knew that once we got, even if I had not a very good warm-up session, when we got to the main mound with the crowd getting involved, we'd get into it. Justin, I have a few stories. <laughs> and they're all good, Rock. They're all good. <laughs> no, they got to be. But Wind them up, John. Let's no, go. but I'll, I'll tell you a story. When I was, And Roger probably doesn't even remember this. I was a minor league kid invited to spring training I with know. the Boston Red Sox. I'm, I know this story. <laughs> and he had to go on the road to throw, and he invited me to go in the car with him and drive to the, to the stadium. That's I mean, right. are you kidding me? That's I'm, right, I'm like baby. 23 years old, 22, whatever it was, and I'm sitting in the car just going back and forth with Roger Clemens, and I, I tell this to people all the time, Roger, you got the pitcher-catcher relationship more than any other guy that I had ever caught, right? Because Love if there was a good game, you said we did it, right? If it was a bad game, you had a tough one. Yeah. And from a catching standpoint, it did not get any better than that. 100%. I remember it. You remember, remember that, right? I absolutely you remember. You do. I remember going over some railroad tracks somewhere. <laughs> we were talking yeah. away. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm telling you. I, I remember this. It, you know, those are memories that, you know, that you uh, take with you forever. That I love when I hit a milestone. Maybe my the anniversary of my 20 strikeout game just went by. And, um, uh, you know, Richie Gedman sends me a text. and Or Charlie O'Brien and uh, Obi and Brad Osman. I mean, Hasselman. I mean, just so many of these guys that were my bread and butter. That's why I pitched 24 years. I had some great guys behind mm -hmm. the plate that could... Uh, that could handle what I was doing and like and like I expect I expect these guys even in pro ball here uh, I tell them there's no excuse you should be able to get the ball within one baseball or two baseballs of where your guys asking for it there's no excuse for you to miss completely across the plate now your relievers they're power throwers they're, I mean I threw over 100 miles an hour a number of times. I pitched between 95 and 97, mm -hmm. and I pitched. And then when I got older, my split became devastating, and that's what I would tell somebody like a, a Roy Oswalt. And uh, Oswalt would always like, Rock, you know, you're throwing 91, 92, and you're punching out nine guys. You know, I said I would get Roy to close his gate a little bit more, close his shoulder, just his front shoulder a little bit, and that's why the guys would always – I had like three hot points. You didn't have to send the pitching coach out. And John didn't have to run out to the mound. He'd just look at me and maybe point at my chin that I was drifting, mm -hmm. or he'd point at my shoulder, close it up just a little bit, and make it and make the hitter feel really uncomfortable because really my front shoulder is pointing at the white stripe on the inside to a right hander. There you go. Swing and a miss. Teron strikes out his second straight. They're two away. Here. This this man needs about, I think, two months to get ten years in. I think he's he's really um, That'd be awesome if somebody sees him and needs an arm. How many injuries that we're having right now, which we kind of knew that was going to happen. Um, it's it's surprising to me with all the technology and all the stuff they're doing to, for the you know the the conditioning things, the advanced conditioning things they're doing for the pitchers, and they're still only going four innings. I got to ask, what piece of technology that's going on today would you have loved to have had at your disposal when you were playing? I didn't need it. I, 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 you ne almost need to regress from what I call the propeller heads. You need to do an eye and a heart test every once in a while. I need the pitching coach to run out and look me in the eye and ask me how I'm feeling. <laughs> Instead of worrying about the guy who might have hit 400 off me a week ago, uh, I need an eye and a heart test. And you know what? It was great. Mel Stoudemire was beautiful with me in New York at my advanced age. I'd come in after the seventh inning. Mel looks like, hey, it looks like you're getting at the end of your rope. You know, you're starting, your mouth's getting open. You're starting to labor. I said, all right, let's do our one out deal. So he knew that I'd go out there, and my warm ups were super important. And if I would give up, uh, you know, I knew that if I give up a hit or a walk, I'm coming out of the game. So it really made me focus even harder. And then next thing you know, I've, I've eaten two more outs to get to the best closer in the game, Mariano mm -hmm. Rivera, to come in and, and only have to get three outs, maybe four. So. Um, other than that, we were we were well advanced. I mean, we had our back then we had our hitters on three by five index cards. Pitch to Cuevas, 
Hit hard on the ground over to Short. Diving stop, Aguilar. Throw to first. Scooped up by Cody Beautiful. Clemens. Nice pick over there. Yeah. There we go. That's that turf. <laughs> Side retired here in the top of the second. Roger Clemens, thanks for joining us here in Staten it, Island. Thanks for having me, man. Good to see you guys. I'll be up seeing the Yankees soon.